Welcome to Ambo TV. Each week we bring you dynamic sermons from next generation pastors from across the country. And as always, they're bringing a fresh new style to the Word of God. And then we discuss those sermons right here in studio. I'm your host, as always, fresh off of vacation, Dean Windsor. And today we have a great show for you. We have sermons from Florida, Georgia, and Washington. And first up is Pastor Jordan Poole from Hope Church in Warner Robins, Georgia. And his sermon is titled, rise to the occasion and he wants you to know that no matter what has happened in your life you don't have to stay stuck you can rise to the occasion and next we go to cape christian church in cape coral florida with pastor cindy grasso that's right the pastor with the sweet soothing voice and she's taking us to the movies and using the story of spider-man to help us find purpose in our life and she's giving encouraging tidbits here so you're going to want to stick around and check it out and lastly we head back to vancouver washington with Pastor Daniel Fusco, and he's talking about Ruth, an extraordinary woman in the Bible, and he's using her life story to teach us how we can also live an extraordinary life. I'll also be joined in studio with Minister Kate Ofikuru from right here in New York, and she's here to help me break down these sermons. We're going to get back to Minister Kate, but right now, let's go to Hope Church with Pastor Jordan Poole. Let's go check him out. God will never cause you to rise to an occasion without some equipment to handle the challenge. I'm talking about a sling and a rock. I'm talking about the jawbone of a donkey. I'm talking about a rod in the hands of Moses. That's what I'm talking about. All you got some loaves and bread. He will use what you have to help you meet the challenge and rise to the occasion. Somebody tell your neighbor, I'm rising to the occasion. You're not going to shrink back. You're not going to fall back in fear. You're going to rise to meet that challenge. You're going to rise to meet that opportunity because sometimes opportunities can be scary. Opportunities to increase can actually be intimidating because we start to get in our feelings, start to think about ourselves and say, I don't know if I can handle this. That's right. You can't handle it. You can't do it. But it's the Spirit of God in you. It's the influential power He's given you. It's the authority from the kingdom of God. You are an ambassador for Christ. Walk like an ambassador. Talk like an ambassador. You walk on behalf of a government that has greater power than this worldly government. Walk like a son of, a, of the king. Walk like a daughter of the king. You are an ambassador for the king. Rise to the occasion. It could be just a switch of your confidence that makes all the difference. And these young sons of the prophets, they come down and say, we got to move, man. This place is getting cramped. Write down this first word if you're going to rise to the occasion. Expansion. Say expansion. Expansion. It's expansion not just physically or materially. It's expansion in your spirit. It's expansion to believe bigger. It's expansion to believe for greater and not lesser than. To believe for God, there is something more on the way. I know there's greater levels of territory. You ever get a sense in you that there's got to be more? Do you ever get a sense in you that the, that the outer court isn't enough? <laughs> you ever get a sense in you that, that, that the outer court and the inner court just won't do it anymore? You got to get into that holy of holies. God is all about, he uses levels to multiply and increase you. That's why it's a 30, 60, 100 fold. Outer court, inner court, holy, uh, holy of holies. And he starts to paint pictures in his scriptures where there's levels of increase. There's levels of depth where you can access more and, and, and gain more insight into things. That's what I'm talking about. Increasing your influence into a place where you start to think on wavelengths you ain't never thought thought on before. You start to think in ideas and in creativity and you begin to innovate things, not just in your home, but on the job as well. In the hallways at the schools, you begin to innovate. You begin to become creative in your generosity. You begin to meet needs all around your circle and in your family. You begin to become a light in the dark. <laughs> Talking about an, an, ex an expansion of that. Expansion of that. But there's always growth pains when you grow. There's always growth pains, and we have to be ready to manage that and to steward that properly. As a church, we have to understand that if, 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 we're, all, if we're all going to increase and influence together, because that's what the man of God preached, that's all I'm, all I'm saying. When, when a prophetic word comes like you got to take it, and you got to bury it, and you got to water it, you got to nurture it, you got to get the word in you all about influence. I need to find out what the word says about influence. I need, to, I need to study people in the Bible who God gave influence to. I need to learn about Daniel, who the Bible says in the Old Testament about a man named Daniel, that he separated or distinguished himself from amongst the other satraps. 
steps. And so a lot of times we wait for God to distinguish us when he's gave us our own individual distinguishing power. The reason that you have, have this draw to your cer certain passions and gifts is because God prepackaged you with those things before you got to the earth. Ephesians 2 and 10 says we are his handiwork that he created in Christ Jesus to do good works ahead of time. Look at your neighbor and say, you a piece of work. You a piece of work. You, are pre, you came to the earth prepackaged. Prepackaged with something that only you can do and the only way you could do it. Only you could do it the way you do it. God don't make no duplicates. Nobody has the same, same uh, fingerprint. If he wanted us all to be the same, he would have gave us all fingerprints. But he, that would be too boring, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it wouldn't give a picture of how, how, how diverse God is and how how. how he truly is. He's, he's, a, he's a God that loves all nations. He's a God that loves all skin colors. He's a God that cares for every single one of these people on this planet Earth that are inhaling and exhaling oxygen. So there has to be an expansion. There has to be an expansion. And a lot of times, the toughest place to expand is going to be your mindset. The hardest thing for a human being to do is change. It's a tough thing for a human being to change because we get in patterns and we get in rhythms and we get, we get in this, this sequence where, where it becomes this, we know what to expect, we know what to do. And that can be a, a good thing, but it also can be a problem for the body of Christ because I believe in repetition. I believe repetition is good. You need to do the cer certain things over and over again because when you do the right things in, in rapid succession, that creates something called momentum. And so if you're needing to build momentum in your life today, you need to do the right things in the right, in the right order. That creates momentum. It creates momentum. And so as a church, how do we do that? We have to come out of sometimes, we have to change our thinking and, and see ourselves multiplied into other areas. Sometimes we, we, we talk about it, but do we really see it? Do we see this right here happening at the same time in a high school auditorium somewhere? All right, that was Pastor Jordan Poole, and joining me in studio today is Minister Kate. Minister Kate, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. All right, so Pastor Jordan was talking about creating momentum, mm -hmm. and also about repetition. I believe that repetition is a great thing, especially when you're trying to master something. What would we do as Christians in, in the line of repetition that would help us be better Christians? Well, one of the things that I think helps us to be better Christians in terms of repetition is creating habits that establish a relationship, right? So when we talk about our faith and we talk about Christianity, we always talk about relationship and not religion. And so um, just like you would your best friend, just like you would family members, you develop relationship by being, in, being present. And so if we are establishing uh, op opportunities and times and seasons in which we are being present, then we do that in a way that's going to build up our relationships. And the only way you build up a relationship um, being present is by being present repeatedly. And so that can look like your morning devotion. Um, for me, I often do scripture writing in the morning okay. where I take um, a, a specific a uh, specific topic or a specific focus and have several scriptures and these are available throughout Google. You just do a Google search for a scripture okay. writing challenge and you can come up with so many different types of, uh, of patterns, topics, resources to help you do this. But just spending time in the morning, first of all, in prayer and then um, in some sort of relationship building uh, opportunity, whether that's scripture writing, whether that's reading certain devotionals and reflecting on those. Um, but that's presence, right? That's establishing intimacy with God. And as we do that, we grow stronger in our faith so that when we're faced with circumstances and situations, we can draw back to that deep well that we've established with God and pull up some of those scriptures that we spent time meditating on, that we spent time writing down and use that to help us develop our relationship and establish presence. I love it, okay. Minister Kate sharing with us some steps for the process right now. We're gonna get into our process and take a commercial break, but we'll be right back with more Ambo TV.
Welcome back to Ambo TV, where we bring you next generation pastors from across the country. Before the break, we were checking out Pastor Jordan Poole in Georgia, but right now, I want to get to Pastor Cindy Grasso in Cape Coral, Florida. Let's go ahead and check her out. So Miles get bit. Miles gets bit by the spider, and something starts to change inside of him. He doesn't know what's going on. Now everything seems off, but he discovers he can do things he couldn't do before, that he's growing in ways that he's never grown before. And I know that when I got around the love of Jesus, and when I started to really understand how he felt about me, something started to change inside of me. When I decided to put my trust in him and give him my life, something supernatural started to happen inside of me. Our verse for today is 2 Peter 1, 3 in the message version, and it says this, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. The thing is, the more you know Jesus, the more he unlocks what he's put inside of you. What I love about that verse is that it's in the past tense. It says that everything that we need to go into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to you. He's already given it to you. And what is a life that pleases God look, look like? What does that mean? Well, I can tell you, I think it means that it's when you lean into your purpose and your God-given potential, that pleases God. He has something for you. The first step in realizing your full potential is this, realize you have potential. Realize there's something there. There's things inside of you that God wants to pull out of you. One of our core values here, one of our codes, is that we are all a work of progress. Jesus is never done with you. He's never done with me. There's always areas where he says, hey, I have a new thing for you, or I want you to use a gift you didn't even know that you had. Now, Miles, in our story, gets bit by the spider, goes back to that subway to try to figure out what in the world happened to him, and finds himself in the middle of a fight with Peter Parker, who is Spider-Man, and the villain. And what has happened is that this villain has built this machine that will bring other people from other universes into ours. Well, the machine works. But the problem is that machine will destroy this world and every world is connected to if it doesn't get shut down. Well, in the process of Peter fighting the villain, the process of Spider-Man fighting this villain, he gets killed. Peter Parker dies. But before he dies, he tells Miles that he has to complete the mission. He says, I need you to do what I can't do right now, and I need you to shut this machine down so that all the people that we love won't die. We find Miles, so Peter dies, and then he's like, how am I supposed to do this? He's alone, he's freaked out, and he doesn't know, how am I supposed to use these gifts that have just been given to me? The first thing you need to know to grow in your potential is that you have potential. The second thing is that you need to realize you can't do it on your own. You gotta find a mentor, find the community, and hang on to them. All right, there's Pastor Cindy Grasso. And, you know, looking at comic books in general, you know, there are a lot of dynamics between comic book heroes and Biblical heroes, Absolutely. you know, yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, just that that confidence and that, you know, Peter Parker was kind of nerdy. He was a nerd kid, and then gets bit by the spider, and then ends up being. But she's talking about Miles Morales, which is a spinoff. We're not going to go there because then I get nerdy. <laughs> so, uh, but no. Now speaking, you know, to to Jesus, and you know, kind of the way Jesus started. You know, what 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 would you say is the best comparison? In, you, in the Bible for you, your favorite one of the underdog kind of rising to the occasion? Ah, uh, that's tough. I, I think I have a tie. Okay. I think I have a tie between Joseph and David. Okay. And I'm going to lean on Joseph. Really? Um, and I've been hearing so many sermons about Joseph lately. It's been mind-blowing. Okay. I think I've heard like six in the past month. But the thing about Joseph that really stands out for me is that he got a glimpse of his potential. Mm -hmm. And instead of saying, 
that's crazy. He kind of went and told, you know, he was, he's a little bit braggadocious in a way, <laughs> you know, and, it, and he stands as, um, as a, you know, as a, as a kind of fable in a way, you know, a, a warning to kind of be mindful of how you choose to disseminate the visions and dreams that God has given you. Okay. Um, and in that way, he kind of serves as a, as a kind of motivating uh, storyline for me. Um, not only because of the fact that he had this troublesome reaction to, uh, to receiving these dreams, but how his life kind of shifted and changed and turned around in a way that he learned from, mm -hmm. grew through, and thrived in. Uh -huh. So, yeah. Wow, that was a very cool take on the story of Joseph. Uh, we're going to get back to that, but right now I want to go ahead and get to Pastor Daniel Fusco in Washington. Let's go ahead and check him out. And so really what you have here is you have this reality that God wants us out of the profits of what we do to honor him by taking care of other people. Now, some people say, oh, that's so nice, but this is the way the marketplace was supposed to work. Now, could you imagine you have a business? You're like, man, I'm gonna wring every bit of profit out of that business for myself. And this is like, no, 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 don't, because the profit comes from me and it's to help other people. And Ruth and Naomi are in a place of need. So Ruth is saying, can I go on out into the fields and try and find some grain because everybody in this community is supposed to be doing this so that we can eat? And What's beautiful is Naomi says, yeah, okay, go, my daughter. And it says that Ruth begins to, 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 to do this, and she gleans the field after the reapers. Now, when you read the reapers, obviously, like when I read the reapers, I'm like, who the reapers? The grim reapers is a bad 80s metal band name or something. But the reapers were the people who reaped the harvest out of the field. So we don't really use that phrase all that much. But the idea is, so she's in the field, and she ends up in the field of Boaz. Right? So it sets the stage. Now, remember I said, your need is God's opportunity? Now, here's the thing. I realize that we live in 21st century America, Western context, which means we don't like to ever express that we have a need of any sort. I mean, of course, we, want, we need faster internet and shorter lines at the coffee place. But other than that, it's like showing need is not a cultural value because it's like, we have it together. We always put on the best face. You know, we got it all together. And, and God forbid we show need. But really, that is our cultural pride and not the heart of God. Because the heart of God says, in effect, that when you have a need, that is when I'm going to reveal myself the most powerfully to you. As I like to say, if you have issues, you are a prime candidate for God to do something miraculous in your life. Because when you got it all squared away, you don't need God in the same way because God's already provided for you in advance. But in the moments of crisis, that's where you see God the most powerfully. So the thing is, is that we have a tendency to want to push our needs away or to cover them, but actually needs are God's primary vehicle to change our lives. Now, here's the thing. Each one of our souls have great need in it. And you might not need anything materially, but your soul has great needs. And what most people do is they try and satisfy the needs of the soul with all sorts of things, right? You try and put things in there to fit. Now, here's what I will tell you, and, and it's been said many, many times that in effect, God created all of us with almost like a God-shaped hole in our soul that only he can fill. And until we allow him to fill that, we're gonna try to fill it with all sorts of things. And many of us know what that's like. I know what it's like. I didn't, I didn't grow up believing this stuff, so man, believe me, I know what it's like. But when you try and fill that God-shaped hole in the center of your, of your being with anything else, it might help you for a moment, but deep down you know, I'm still missing something. You know, it's not like saying, I'm trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You're trying to fill all the ocean with a, with a drip of water. And you know it, but you try. But what I want to tell you is that all of us have need. And when we come to the Lord and say, Lord, I need you, God. I need you. He's like, I've always been here for you. 
Pastor Daniel Fusco, powerful as always, uh, Minister Kate. There, there's so many ways that God takes care of us that we don't even realize is, it's happening on a daily basis. Absolutely. You know, are, are there ways that we can kind of identify so we're more grateful and so we're more thankful? So when we finally do need God, and, mm-hmm. and, and you know, not that because we always need God, always. when we finally come to God and say, I need something, now I need help, because now I've, I've gotten to a point where I, I can no longer do this on my own, you know. Well, part of that has to do with um, self-examination, okay. you know, um, on a daily basis, if we are um, intentional about our relationship with the Father, um, then we are also saying, these are the things that my heart is contending with. And if we are reflective in that way, then we'll be more apt to figure out the things that we're really in need of and find ways throughout our day, not just at the beginning or not just, you know, at times of corporate gatherings, but throughout our days to be like, well, this is the condition of my heart right now. These are the things that are on my mind. Father, you are a father to me. And I know because you said in your word that, no good thing would you withhold from those who walk uprightly and that we should cast our cares upon you because you care for us, that even these minor things, like getting a parking space in New York City, <laughs> is not too hard for you to do. Yeah. And I'm a testimony to that. Okay. I mean, for me, honestly, I just end up forking over the money at a garage. But if you can find a parking spot, Jesus is with you constantly and you're confident. So I love that. That's amazing. I, and I mean, I, it is. It does work on the little things, too. It, work, it works on the little levels. Um, we also have a small level where Jesus helps us out, and that's when uh, we take our commercial breaks. So we'll be right back with more Ambo TV. Welcome back to Ambo TV, bringing a fresh new style to the Word of God. Before the break, we were checking out Pastor Daniel Fusco, but right now I want to get back to Pastor Jordan Poole in Warner Robins, Georgia. Let's check him out. Vision. Who you go with matters. Who you go with matters. You got to say vision. Because watch what happens. The young man, the young man is chopping the tree. He's chopping the tree. Elisha's gone with him. Chopping the tree. And then the Bible says the axe head flies off into the water. And he screams, it was borrowed. It wasn't mine. Trying to borrow someone else's faith. Praise God for your mom and your grandma and your dad and all them. But there is a call to you today for God. He wants you to have your own acts. He wants you to have your own faith. Thank God for their salvation, but it's not their salvation. It might have brought you to a place where you could be introduced, but it requires you to take out and grab it. Watch this now. This young man is chopping and he loses his edge. I wonder how many people look like this young man trying to be a husband with no edge, trying to raise kids with no edge. Want to launch a business but ain't got no edge. Trying to fight the battles that you're fighting with No edge. But this is sadly, this is what some people look like. They're they're, they're just chopping away, crying, sweating, crying some more, telling everybody their problems, and they don't even realize they've lost their edge. They don't even realize they're trying to operate out of flesh and they're trying to, they think it's up to them and they think it's, they think it's going to be their resources. But let me tell you, I'm telling you, some of us are chopping like this and we're wondering why trees aren't falling. We wonder why advancement isn't happening and we wonder why. Well, we know why because the only time you come to get sharpened is Sunday. 
And it's, it's, it's a sad truth. It's a sad truth. The only time some people get sharpened is on Sunday between 9.30 and 11.30. And God's saying, bring, bring that ax to me on Monday too. Bring, it, bring that meeting you're about to step in to on Tuesday. Bring that to me. I want to sharpen you. I want to prepare you. How about you fast by yourself? Just fast. Get alone. Get alone. Yeah, I'm talking to me too. Get alone with me because I, I need to tell you some things. I need to sharpen that dullness that you got. I need to bring, make you aware of some things. I, I don't want you to be out there swinging with no edge. I don't want you to be out there wondering why nothing's moving and nothing's shaking and you don't even realize your edge has fallen off and you've gone dull. No, no, no. Come back to me. Seek my face and watch what I can do. Watch how I can sharpen you. Watch how I can make you aware of those plotting against you. Watch how I can whisper some things to you in secret that no other man could tell you. Watch how, watch how I can show you direction and bring clarity to a cloudy situation. How many need clarity in your cloudy situation to say, God, my axe has fallen into the muddy river and it's cloudy down there but I know your word can bring clarity to my cloudy I don't want to chop with no edge and too many times we're relying on people and in relationship with those because the axe head has to be connected to something all right, that was Pastor Jordan Poole being dynamic and, and very animated as usual, but telling a great, great, great story. So, uh, Minister Kate, is there a way that we can, you know, what does it look like actually? You know, I'm going to rewind here. What does it look like when we start to lose our edge in our faith wall? Well, that can often look like um, getting caught up in our day to day and not taking the time to pause and reflect, pause and give thanks for the day, pause and seek God for guidance throughout the day. And when we do that, we're flowing in our duties, our habits, we're busy serving, we're busy giving, we're busy attending meetings, and we're busy you know, donating and doing all the things that are good and that we know to do but not taking the time to be still before God, not taking the time to hear from God in prayer, in studying the word, in reflecting on the word. And when we do that, we can become so much into the place of pouring out and pouring out and not being filled. Mm. And we wanna always be mindful that as we pour out, we're also being poured into. And so how do we kind of correct that then? We're mindful, first of all, of the conviction that comes from Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, if we find ourselves in a place where I, I've gone this whole day and I haven't taken the time to even pray or thank God for the day, that's the conviction that comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And when we receive that conviction, then that's an opportunity for us to change our ways and not allow that conviction to grow to a point where we start having thoughts of guilt um, and shame because that's condemnation and condemnation doesn't come from God. So when we receive that conviction and we get the realization that comes from Holy Spirit, hey, I really haven't taken the time to, uh, to thank God for the day, to, to get in the word, then you make the changes that you need to make for whatever it is. And when you make those changes, now you move from conviction to redemption. And we're always under redemption because that's God's gift to us, that he redeems us and brings us back into relationship with him. Okay, I love it. There you go, Minister Kate. Move from conviction to redemption. I love it. Uh, right now, we're going to go ahead and move into Cape Coral, Florida with Pastor Cindy Grasso. Let's go ahead and let her wrap it up. He says, I didn't know I could do this before, but now I do. And I hope you can know, I hope you know that I'm not the only one. I'm here to tell you that you may not know it. You may not know what you could do before, but there's more in you than you can possibly imagine. And it's for you, it's for anybody, it's for everyone. You can reach your full potential in God. Our verse, 2 Peter 1.3 says, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. It is this mystery and I don't understand it, but I live it and it's this thing where it's in past tense and it says, everything you need has been given to you miraculously by the one, by getting to know Jesus. 
So when I put my trust in him, he gives me everything. And then as I walk with him, as I get to know with him, as I take a leap of faith with him, he pulls out the things that he's put inside of me. He pulls it out, he develops. He says, you get to know me and I will help you get to know who I created you to be. Walk with me, trust me, take that leap of faith, jump, fall, get back up and try again. This is for you. This is for you, not somebody else, not the person sitting next to you, for you. God has more for you. Five steps to realizing your full potential. Realize you have it. Second is realize you can't do it on your own. Realize the one who made you knows what he puts inside of you. It is always about faith. And finally, it's not about you. It's not about you, but it starts with you. It's a choice and it's a trust. It's a choice and it's a trust. And God is saying, I'm inviting you today to put your trust in me. And if you choose to do that, he will help you. Listen, Jesus said in John 14, 12, that whoever believes in him, he said, whoever believes in me will do the works I'm doing and greater things. He says, I, you're gonna do greater things with you. Why? Because he's in you. And he's in all of us if you choose him. All you have to do is accept the invitation and put your trust in Jesus. That's all you have to do is accept that invitation. And you know, all it looks like, you might be here and you've never done that before. You didn't know that it could be you. You thought it had to be for someone else that's better or special. Nope. For God so loved you, he sent his son for you, that when you believe in him, you won't perish, but you'll have everlasting life starting right now all you have to do. If you want to do that, or maybe you're here and you're on one of the steps and you're stuck, you're like gotten to a certain place and you're like can't go farther, all you have to do is take a leap of faith and ask. There's Pastor Cindy Grasso and you know, just continuing with the theme of realizing your potential and you know, kind of cultivating your your gifts. Now, I did a, uh, a live about, you know, having gifts that you don't even know about. Mm -hmm. So are, is there a good way that you can help the people at home? Is there a process to kind of realize your potential or maybe your hidden potential that you don't even know about? Um, absolutely. Um, like I've been kind of reiterating the same idea about being in relationship. Um, the more that we're in relationship with our creator, the more he unveils to us. Um, and so he shows himself to us in different ways. Um, but we only know that if we're taking the time to be in a communication. And so, first of all, being in communication with the one who made you, right? Um, he, uh, Paul writes in Ephesians that we are his workmanship. We have been created in Christ Jesus to do good works, um, which he knew beforehand. And so if we are in relationship, then we are uh, in the process of pursuing um, those opportunities that come our way that help us to grow in our understanding of who we are and who God is to us. And as we do that, God continues to unveil himself to us more and more. When we are intentional about um, not only uh, being in relationship with God, but being in relationship with one another. Others that are, that are around us also show us who we are by kind of highlighting those things we do well. And that also gives us a clue as to, you know, what God has made us to do. Yes, thank you so much for that, Minister. And that's kind of been a recurring theme here uh, on Ambo TV. It's finding God in others and, and strengthening your relationship with God through others. It's a great thing. Uh, that was Pastor Cindy Grasso. Right now we're gonna go ahead and take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back with more Ambo TV. Welcome back to Ambo TV, home of the next generation pastors. We were just checking out Pastor Cindy Grasso before the break, but right now I want to get back to Pastor Daniel Fusco in Washington State. Let's go ahead and check him out. Your testimony who God is in your life and how you respond to God, that's your testimony, it will open doors for you because that's exactly what happens to Ruth. 
Because right away when Boaz hears that this is that young Moabite woman who returned to Bethlehem with Naomi, he begins to step on out to bless her, to take care of her. Look at what he says to her. He says, and I think this is so awesome the way he speaks to her. He says to her, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Verse eight. Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. And she fell down on her face and bowed down to the ground and said to him, why have I found favor in your eyes that you should take notice of me since I am a foreigner? And Boaz answered her, verse 11, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have now come to a people whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel. So Boaz goes, because he's heard about Ruth. And he goes and he says, listen, what I want you to do, I don't want you to go anywhere else. You stay here in this field. You stay with the young women. The young women who are working, you're gonna work alongside of them. And when you're thirsty, you don't have to go trying to find water. Because you can imagine that for a landowner where there's all these people who are either needy or impoverished, people gleaning, that was just part of it. But you didn't really take good care of them. You were taking care of them by allowing them to glean in your field. But he said, no, no, listen, I want you to not go to any other field. You don't have to go anywhere else other than right here. And you know what I also love? You know what he says? He's like, have I not commanded the young men not to mess with you? Now, that sounds weird to us, but you have to think about a woman who is impoverished is very vulnerable, especially not only in that culture, in any culture, right? Because there's that problem with the fallenness of men that they take advantage of people. And so what I love about Boaz is not only is he a guy who blesses people, but Boaz is the kind of guy who he goes to his workers and he says, hey, no shenanigans here. You be honorable men. Don't, don't mess with anybody. Now, you know what I love about that? That's in short supply today. And listen, I'm gonna talk to the guys here for a second. You guys, listen. We should be this type of man. We should be kind of men who we bless people in the way that we speak. We should be the kind of man that when we see one of our buddies being dumb as it relates to women, we should be like, hey, no shenanigans. That's dumb. See, here's the thing. Too many of us are allowing our lives as men to, to go based on the thermometer, where you take the temperature of what's going on and you just act in regards to the temperature. But no, God's men are supposed to be thermostats. We're supposed to set the temperature. And what I love so much about Boaz is not only is Boaz a man who blesses, he's a man of generosity because he's taking care of Ruth. He's heard the testimony. And then he's saying, listen, to all of his workers, listen, no messing around. This young woman, yes, she's poor. Yes, she's vulnerable. Yes, she's gleaning in the field. And you can imagine the horror things that could go on in a field for a woman who's having to glean in someone's field. And he's like, none of that stuff. And I think this is so important because we live in a day and age where what's going on, people are calling it toxic masculinity. Where men, because they're men, think that they can treat women in a way that completely demeans who women are in the eyes of God, creating the image and likeness. And I'm grateful that our culture has finally called it and said, this is wrong, because you know why? It is toxic masculinity. Because the ultimate example of masculinity anywhere is Jesus of Nazareth, the one who always did those things that pleased his father. And was there ever a woman who was demeaned or degraded or treated poorly by Jesus? Was there ever? Was there ever a woman who left the presence of Jesus and didn't feel more blessed? And all this garbage that we see in our culture of men who are insecure, trying to make themselves feel stronger at the expense of a woman, that's from the pit of hell. It's wrong. And it should never be named so amongst the people of God. Because that's not who Jesus was. I know if some of these toxic masculine guys grew up in my house, they would have gotten a wooden spoon from my mom and grandma. That's how things got handled in my house. But here's the thing. You guys, listen. If one of your friends is being dumb, I want you to poke them in the eye. 
so that when they come to church, all the guys with the red eye, we're gonna round them up. <laughs> we're gonna bring them to men's ministry with Pastor Ryan Blount. We're gonna have a good old fashioned intervention. <laughs> but no, I mean, I I'm being playful, but I'm not. Because here's the thing, you guys, you're supposed to be the thermostat. You're supposed to be the guy who is setting the temperature right where God would have it. And Boaz is one of those guys. I mean, I love this idea of Boaz the boss. He notices this one girl. He finds out, he's like, I'm gonna take care of her. And hey, you guys, no messing with this girl. That's God's daughter. This is a woman of valor. This is a woman who deserves respect. And I think if more men did that, we wouldn't have all the junk that's going on today. If more men, and listen, I know, you know, you guys, like, you gotta get up in your, in your boys' faces in that way. You know, I know women, they sit around, they talk, they cry. Man, you just gotta confront that. Guys, respond to confrontation. Now, if some of you guys are a little too fragile for that, sorry. <laughs> but if you get poked in the eye, you can be sorry later. All right, Pastor Fusco doing an unusual take on the story of Ruth and Boaz and tying it into toxic masculinity, which is, you know, it's a buzzword right now. It's definitely a hot button word in our culture. So, uh, you know, what exactly is toxic masculinity? Because I, um, in my little office, my little man cave, I have, you know, like swords on the wall and, and stuff like that, because I like that stuff. Is that, like, how, how do we know what's toxic and what's not? Um, well, I think Pastor Busco kind of set this precedent to help us really understand toxic masculinity the way he's describing it. And from my perspective and from my experience, you know, what I, when we see men not meeting the standard that's been set in the Bible, like how Boaz covered Ruth, you know, she was in a um, she was a marginalized woman, you know, in that culture, those who were widowed and orphaned, they didn't have any welfare or any other kind of resource for them to live off of and um, they didn't really work in that age and so Boaz saw this um, this young woman who was in a marginalized position and he um, stepped up to the plate and covered her and in our society you know women can can take care of themselves mostly but still in a way I would say that toxic masculinity is undermining the work of women, undermining the work of those who are mar marginalized by uh, puffing your own self up as a man, by pushing your own agenda to the detriment of others, um, by not standing up for those that are less fortunate, those that are in positions where they're being, um, for example, the Me Too movement, those that are being, that are not being seen for their potential, those that are not being, given equity, not being, give, not being given equality, when, when men are in a position to support those that are less fortunate themselves and they don't do it, that's to toxic masculinity. And that's what I think Pastor Musco is referencing when he talks about how Boaz responded to Ruth. Okay, so it's not necessarily liking Rambo movies no. or you know <laughs> going to hit the gym because you want to, you know, a couple of extra inches on your biceps. Like, so that's, that's, I'm safe. Like, most guys are safe. Yeah. It's basically using your masculinity in order to oppress others or to, you know, uneven the playing field. Absolutely. So, all right, great explanation. Thank you so much. Now I know. Now I'm not worried about being a toxic uh, male. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead and take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more Toxic Free Ambo TV. Have you ever felt that way? Like you just want to be somewhere like really fast, like, oh, it's just not happening fast enough that I think it should be. Here's the thing. A good mentor, a healthy community, won't just tell you what you want to hear. They'll tell you what you need to hear to grow. All right, Pastor Cindy Grasso breaking it down with the Spider Gwen t-shirt. And as we always do at the end of every show, we ask our guest, to give us a scripture or a Bible passage that we can kind of take home and that relates to that ending clip. Is there something that you know you can give to us and the people at home? Absolutely. And talking about um, mentorship and community, uh, First Timothy comes to mind. And looking at how Paul 
dis- dissertates to Timothy and helps him to understand his position in this growing community of believers. He says to him, don't be afraid of how young you are and don't let them uh, anyone despise you because of your youth and encourages him to continue to preach the gospel and not only preach the gospel, but develop an entire church community. So yeah. I love it. Well, Minister Kate, thank you so much for being here. I, I really had a good time, and you have some amazing insights. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much All for right. having me. Awesome. Come back sometime? Absolutely. Promise. Okay, awesome. Uh, and to our partnering churches, Hope Church with Pastor Jordan Poole, Cape Coral Church with Pastor Cindy Grasso, and Crossroads Community Church with Pastor Daniel Fusco. Thank you guys for those great messages. Please keep them coming. To see the complete sermons and other great sermons, head over to ambotv.com. We always have awesome content there for you guys. And uh, you can sign up for our new newsletter. Have you yet? Yeah, I mean, you need to. Thank you, everybody, for watching Ambo TV. Remember, join us again. Good night, and see you next week.